Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. I just, been so good. Make some noise in this sanctuary.
said he's right on time. Amen and amen. We bless God on today because we serve a mighty good God. Amen. We bless God for our worship leader by way of Deacon Ella Davis. We thank you and we bless you and we praise God for you. We thank God for our musicians, Brother Derek and Trustee Howard. We thank God always for our ushers under the leadership of Sus Lala Owens. Amen. Oh, little bossy, little Lala Owens. Try to tell me what to do. But she know I love her. She know she, she my mama. And we certainly bless and thank God for our diagonal ministry and our trustee ministry. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen. There is a word from the Lord on today. If you have your Bibles, please stand with me. Turn to John, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 9. Amen. John, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 9. Amen. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Amen. And please continue to pray for our sister Joyce Blackstone. She is in the hospital, and uh, just pray that God will heal her. Amen. Amen. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Amen. And also, we lost Brother Gaither on this week, so please keep his family in your prayers. Brother Gaither Blanchard. What is Blake? What is, is it Blanchard Blake Gaither or Gaither Blanchard? Which one is it? One of them. What you said. <laughs> John 5, 1 through 9. And it reads, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. This is the word of God to the people of God, so saith the Spirit. And I just want to use for a title today, Take Up Your Bed. Take Up Your Bed. Father God, we thank you and we praise you, O oh God, for this great day. Now, God, I pray that you would empower me from on high with thy Holy Ghost Spirit, God. I pray, God, that you would anoint me from the crowns of my head to the sole of my feet. I pray, oh God, that as I stand behind this sacred pulpit, God, that you would empower me to preach the word to the people of God. That when they go down from this place, they will never be the same, God. Use me, oh God, until heaven kisses earth. Hide me behind the cross that the people see all of you and none of me. And when it's all said and done, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it is in the mighty and the marvelous name of Jesus we do pray. And all of God's people said, amen. Take up your bed. Take up your bed. Let, let me set the stage from the work and preacher commentary. The place is a pool called Bethesda near the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem. Lying in the porticos around this pool are many invalids, the blind, lame, and paralyzed. The earliest manuscript of John do not explain why the invalids are there, but later scribes added an explanation that appears in certain manuscripts. 
according to this explanation, people believe that an angel of the Lord will come down and stir the waters. And that whoever was the first to enter the pool after the waters were stirred would be healed of his or her malady. The man in today's gospel won't get up off of his mat until he sees the first bubble or the first ripple of the waters. He is living and stagnant, a stagnant life. Uh, he's also living an as soon as life. Y'all know what I'm talking about. As soon as the water bubbles, then I'll get up off my mat. As soon as I get to the water, my life will be better. As soon as I get into the water, my problems will be fixed. Some of us then, then heard this before. As soon as I get myself together, I'm coming back to church. As soon as I get me a job paying more money, I'm going to pay my tithe. As soon as things start looking better for me, I'll be back. Y'all know them, don't you? As soon as, y'all know, y'all know, as soon as, every one of us have him in our family. At this pool every day is the same, waiting, watching, hoping, not much changes. Sitting on his mat has become a very way of life for him. His life is stagnant. He is convinced that life will bubble up outside of him over there in that magic water. So he sits on his mat waiting and watching and hoping that things will change. And we don't know how long he'd been there, but the Bible says that he had been infirm like this for 38 years. He was paralyzed waiting for his turn. And every time he tried to jump in, somebody else would beat him to it. And then one day a man named Jesus, somebody say a man named Jesus. A man named Jesus walks up and asks the question that will change his life. He asks, do you want to be made whole? I don't know about anybody else, but if it were me, I would say, what do you think? You asking me a question like that, do I want to be made whole? I ain't been sitting around this pool all this year, all these years just to be sitting here. But this man gives an excuse, like most of us. Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But why I'm coming another step down before me. Jesus heard not his words, but his heart and gave him the answer to being well. And this man didn't even know that it was Jesus, the son of God, uh, the great physician. Uh, and Jesus tells him to rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Uh, and let me unpack a couple of thoughts as we go down from this place. Uh, first, Jesus knows your condition. Uh, and even though the man had never met Jesus, Jesus knew him. Uh, he knew his condition without having to be told. Uh, Jesus knows all there is to know about us. Uh, nothing in our life catches him by surprise. Uh, he knows everything there is to know about you inside out, all you have ever felt, thought, or done. He knows your condition, he knows your pain, and he knows your desire in life. What's most important about our omniscient God is that he knows what we need. Psalm 139, 1 through 4 says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. God knows, God sees, and God cares. God is not blind to your circumstances. And when life get hard, we can sometimes wonder if God is blind to all we are facing. I know you've been there. I've been there. Sometimes I wonder, God, where in the world you are? You said this and you said that, but I'm going through this. Uh, anybody beside me has ever been there before. But I like Second Chronicles 16 and 9. This is the scripture that make me know that God sees everything. Uh, it says, for the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Uh, don't you know that God is going to and fro and he sees you every situation that you may be going through? He sees it. That's why we serve Elroy, the God who sees me. 
He is an all-knowing, ever-present God who is continually aware of every detail of our lives. And not only is God aware, but he's also looking to strengthen individuals who are willing to wholeheartedly place their trust in him. You just need to believe that God is who God says that he is. Uh, can I ask a question this morning? Uh, do you believe that God is who he say he is? Uh, do you believe that he is a healer? Do you believe that he is a deliverer? Do you believe that he is all in that he said that he is? Can I tell you something? There's not a, not a situation in your life that God cannot handle. He knows what's going on with you. He knows how you feel. He understands your situation. And he says, this ain't about them. This is about you. Take your bed and walk. My second nugget, Jesus is near. Jesus chooses to go to this pool. He didn't stumble there by accident. He knew where he was going. Jesus was going to this pool the same way he went to the woman at the well. Y'all remember in John 4, the woman at the well, uh, when Jesus met the woman at the well? Can I tell you something? Jews and Samaritans did not get along. They didn't like each other. But the short way, every, all the other Jews would go around to Jerusalem to get to Galilee. Uh, but this particular day, Jesus took the shortcut through Samaria because he knew he had to meet a woman at the well. Uh, can I tell you something? God has a place that he want to meet you at. Uh, and you got to be ready to receive him uh, when he meets you at your well. Uh, or when he meets you by your pool. Amen. Jesus moves toward needs, uh, toward brokenhearted people, yes. not the self-righteous. Jesus knew where they were just like he knows where you are. It makes no difference how long you've been going through what you've been going through. God has always been there. He's always been there. Now, he's always seen you just where you are. And he inspired Ezekiel to call him Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. And Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. Uh, well, run all you want. He's there. One proof. The Bible says in Psalm 139, 7 and 10, uh, whether shall I go from thy spirit uh, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? Uh, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning uh, and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand uh, shall hold me. He's near church. You may have a pressing need today. You may have a struggle of disease and infirmity, some baggage, some bondage, any number of things keeping you down. You may not recognize it, but Jehovah Shammah, the Lord, is right there near you. Jesus is near. Today could be the day of your deliverance. Today you may feel lonely. You may think there's no one to help you. You are all alone. Remember, God is there to help you. Uh, some of you may be thinking your situation ain't that important when you think about all the stuff that's going on in the world. Uh, but the song said, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Uh, oh, I like that, that song. God, uh, you may be heading somewhere else, God. Uh, but Lord, I'm calling on you now. Uh, don't pass me by, Lord, while I'm in there by the pool of Bethesda. Don't, don't pass me by while I'm standing at the well, God. Uh, Lord, I'm calling on you, Lord, and I need you right now. And God will hasten uh, to your call. You don't have to make any more excuses for why you are still in the condition you've been in for so long. Jesus only asks do you want to be made whole? I like this thinker. He didn't ask, do you want to get well? But he asked, do you want to be made whole? Because when you get well, you might get sick again. But when you're made whole, 
He fixes everything that's going on in your life. Uh, so he asks him, do you want to be made whole? This man had a choice. He could start walking or just lie in the same condition. But can I say something right there? There are too many people that like laying in the place that they're in. They, they like the condition that they're in. They like the pity parties that they can throw up. But you can have your pity party all you want. Uh, but when the Lord looks at me and asks me, uh, do you want to be made whole? What do you think, God? Yes! I want to be made I want to be made whole. There were many reasons for him not to walk. It was a Sabbath day. And on a Sabbath day, the Jews did no work. And when that man bent down to pick up the mat that he was laying on, they considered that work. Can you believe that? Jesus coming and asking you, do you want to be made whole but you don't want to move because it's Sunday or Sabbath, Saturday for them? On this day, they weren't allowed to lift anything, to do anything, to work nothing. You see, to lift that mat was against the law. And a lot of you are still in your predicament because of the law. But how many of you know that faith sometimes acts against the law? Today we have a choice to act against our circumstances, act against our negative thoughts, or to continue in the same situation. When the man listened to the voice of God, his condition changed. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. God is telling somebody this morning, I'm speaking, but you're not listening. He says that if you just open up your spiritual ears and hear me, he says, I will change your life forever. I don't know who it's for, but God says he wants to change the way you are. He wants to change your circumstance. He wants to change your situation. Just listen to what he says, and he says, I'll make the change in your life. He's near church. He's as close as your whisper. Don't be surprised when he tells you to take up your bed and walk. And then finally, I'm finished. Jesus has the power to deliver us. Jesus saith unto him, rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Jesus is able, church. Let me say it again. Jesus is able. Uh, when we lay around, when we use the, the bed for a, a crutch, when we look for excuses, we end up staying where we at. Uh, but I stopped by here on my way to Jesus to let you know uh, that he is able. Uh, when you stuck and can't get moving, Jesus is able. Uh, when you're down and out, Jesus is able. Uh, when it seems like there's no tomorrow, Jesus is able. Uh, when you feel all alone, Jesus is able. Uh, when you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, Jesus is able. Uh, when you're sick and can't get well, uh, Jesus is able. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but when Jesus tells us to move, uh, Sister Louise Kelly will tell you, you gotta move. Uh, when God get ready, uh, you gotta move. Uh, anybody in here wanna move? Uh, when God says get ready, cause you are about to move. Uh, oh! deliver us. The Bible says, many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. When the writer of Hebrew talks about him, he says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. And then Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, for the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, uh, but in power. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you all is that when Jesus tells you to pick up your bed, uh, he supplies the power. Uh, you just need to be available uh, because he's able, church. Uh, I said he's able. Uh, he's able to heal. 
heal. He's able to deliver. He's able to set free. Able to turn around. Able to uh, to meet, make your midnight into day. Able to turn your no into yes. Able to supply every need. He's able to make a way out of no way. He's able to strengthen you. Able to raise you up. Able to turn that stumbling block into a stepping stone. Yeah. How many of you know today that God is able? He's able, church. I tell you, he's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able to do anything but fail. My God can't fail. He can't fail. He's able. He's able, church. I tell you, he's able. We've been lying around long enough on our bed of comfort, our bed of excuse, our bed of maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Lying around long enough waiting for somebody else to come along to help you in to your pool of Bethesda. But it's time for you to get up, take up your bed. I like that, Sheila. The thing that he laying on, uh, the thing that carried him, uh, he's now carrying it. Uh, can I tell you something? Uh, it's time for you to take up that thing uh, that's been carrying you. Uh, you pick that thing up uh, and you need to carry it to the Lord in prayer. And he will uh, turn it around. Jesus knows our condition. Jesus is there. He has the power. He tells us this morning, church, to get up and be about his business. Willie Chapel, it's time for you to get up and take up your bed and walk. Church don't need no invalid, no paralyzed, no impotent people. We need folk that can walk into their destiny, walk into their purpose. That it may bring good to them and glory to God. God is able. And he's waiting on you. He's spoken into your spirit and says, I will make a change in your life. There may be one on today. You don't know I'm in the pardon of your sins. This is your time. This is your opportunity to make a life changing decision. I promise you when you come into contact with Jesus, your life will never be the same again. He will start from the inside and work his way out and make you anew. That's the God I serve. He won't leave you like he found you. He didn't leave that man by the pool like he found him. He was walking. And they tell you that the people saw him want to know who it was that healed the man said I don't know who it was all I know is that he healed me but I can tell you for myself who it was his name is Jesus all you got to do is accept him he don't want to just be your savior he want to be your lord he wants you to surrender everything to him on today is there one on today There may be one that's in a backslidden state. And you need to come back. You need to come nigh to Jesus again. He says, if you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. See, Jesus is still where you left him, waiting for you to come back. If 
that's you on today. Please come, ma'am. Come, sir. There may be someone here on today that just need prayer. You want to be able to hear when the Lord is speaking so that you can hear the change that comes to you through him. Hallelujah. Is there anyone else that need prayer on today? Turn this way, turn this way, turn this way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Help me get behind me now. Get behind me. Leave me alone. I'm getting through this prayer. If I got a cough and come back and finish it, get behind me. Father God, we thank you and we praise you on this day. Thank you for every person that came forth on today. For whatever their problem is, God, we know that you know all about it. You knew it before it came into their life, God. Right now, I pray that you would touch them, God. That you would touch their ears that they can hear in the spirit when you tell them to get up and take up their beds and walk. I pray, God, that when they leave from this altar, God, that life will begin to change for them, God. That they will see you, they will hear you, and they will walk into their purpose. God, right now, touch them like only you can, God. For you are God and God all by yourself. A God that's only one thing that's impossible with you and that, that you can't fail. God, right now, I pray, God, for every person with an ailment, every person with depression and oppression, every spirit, every spirit, God, that is running through this place that is not of you, we cast it out into the pits of hell to return no more. Praying for your love and your mercy. Praying for your grace, God. Praying for your kindness. Praying for your faithfulness. Praying for your long-suffering, God. Praying that you would move like you never moved before, God. Have your way in this place, God. Touch them from the crowns of their head to the very sole of their feet. Let no weapon formed against your props, for God. Keep them, and they shall be kept. <coughs> Strengthen them that they may become strong, God. Lord, we pray now in the name of Jesus that you will work in us and through us. That we, Lord, will be your hands and your feet in the earth. That we will be your mouth, Lord, that run, run and tell somebody about us, Jesus, that saves. Lord, use us that we may be here on the earth. Lord God, setting up your kingdom. Lord, I pray even now, God, that as we go down from this place, but never ever from your presence, that you will bless your people. Touch them, Lord. Keep them, God. Watch over them as they go over the dangerous highways and byways. Grant them traveling mercies from danger seen and unseen. Allow them arrive home and find all things well. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Excuse me, Bible study papers are right here if anybody need a Bible study paper.